Israel and its lobby lose the Iran deal all over again in news of damning wiretaps. By James North and Philip Weiss, Mondo Weiss on Information Clearinghouse, December 31, 2015. You'd think that there would be widespread outrage over the story everyone's talking about today, the Wall Street Journal scoop that the Obama administration spied on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu during the Iran deal negotiations so as to counter his efforts to sink it. The wiretaps reveal that Israeli officials were up to their necks in the U.S. political process. They, quote, coordinated talking points with Jewish American groups against the deal and asked undecided lawmakers what it would take to win their votes, according to current and former officials familiar with the intercepts. The president approved the wiretaps. Excerpt, privately, Mr. Obama maintained the monitoring of uh, Mr. Netanyahu on the grounds that it served a compelling national security purpose, according to current and former U.S. officials. That's right, there's a compelling national interest in stopping the Israeli lobby. Yeah. Many have said that President Obama lacks spine. Well, it sure looks like the leak to reporters Adam Entos and Danny Yadron came from the administration, but it's hard to believe that a leak of this magnitude was not approved by the president. Just when the Israeli lobby thought that it was starting to get back to business as usual, the Obama administration has reminded them that something has fundamentally changed in the U.S.-Israel relationship. Not only did we beat the lobby and Israel on the Iran deal, but we're exposing your tactics. The patriotic Americans are going to be very upset by what they see. Remember that Obama, in his highlight moment of the Iran deal, told Americans it would be an, quote, abrogation of my constitutional duty to defer to Israel's interests on the Iran deal. <laughs> You'd think it would be a scandal that the Israeli PM was intriguing with the Republicans. And surely some Democrats, in the way DWSJ has documented, but instead the official reaction is likely to be how r outrageous it was for Obama and the NSA to be listening in on the supposed only democracy in the Middle East. <laughs> some of the details from this article. The U.S. pursuing a nuclear arms agreement with Iran at the time captured... Communications between Mr. Netanyahu and his aides that inflamed mistrust between the two countries and planted a political minefield, planted a political minefield at home when Mr. Netanyahu later took his campaign against the deal to Capitol Hill. Uh, the National Security Agency's targeting of Israeli leaders and officials also swept up the contents of some of their private conversations with U.S. lawmakers and American Jewish groups that raised fears. An O.S. moment. One senior U.S. official said that the executive branch would be accused of spying on Congress. White House officials believed the intercepted information could be valuable to counter Mr. Netanyahu's campaign. Much of the article substantiates the allegation swirling at the time of the deal that Netanyahu was getting inside information on the secret negotiations. The eavesdropping revealed to the White House how Mr. Netanyahu and his advisors had leaked details of the U.S.-Iran negotiations learned through Israeli spy spying operations to undermine the talks, coordinated talking points with Jewish American groups against the deal, and asked undecided lawmakers what it would take to win their votes, according to current and former officials familiar with the intercepts. The notorious Israeli ambassador Ron Dermer was caught on the tapes. Uh, Mr. Dermer was described as coaching unnamed U.S. organizations, which officials could tell from the context were Jewish American groups. On lines of argument to use with lawmakers and Israeli officials were reported pressing lawmakers to oppose the deal. Israel's pitch to undecided lawmakers often included such questions as, How can we get your vote? What's it going to take? Again, no names of U.S. legislators, but this article contains the explicit threat that Israel could expose individuals down the road. 
The practice is sure to anger Americans and drive an even deeper wedge into the Jewish community over the role of the lobby. Patriotic Jewish Americans are going to be embarrassed yet again by the extent to which Israeli Israel tries to subvert our government using American Jewish friends to do so. And many will walk away from the lobby over this kind of business. Uh, okay. The large wavering middle middle of pro-Israel forces. The large wavering middle of pro-Israel forces is going to be set back. J Street made the right call on the Iran deal. Reluctantly, I've heard. But it will reap a dividend. Notre Dame professor Michael Desch's interpretation Quote, the lobby in Congress will no doubt try to spin it as more evidence of Obama's anti-Israel animus. But the story constitutes powerful evidence of, one, divergence of U.S. and Israeli interests on important issues like Iran, and two, a close coordination of the lobby and government of Israel in trying to influence U.S. domestic politics. Scott Horton refers to the last big eavesdropping scandal when then-Congresswoman Jane Harman promised a suspected Israeli agent that she would attempt to stop a federal case against American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, staffers in exchange for that agent's political affluent influence in getting her a committee chair. Jeff Stein reported the story. Excerpt Representative J Jane Harmon, the California Democrat with a long time involvement in intelligence issues, was overhe overheard on an NSA wiretap telling a suspected Israeli agent that she would lobby the Justice Department to reduce espionage related charges against two officials of the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, the most powerful pro Israel organization in Washington. Harmon was recorded saying she would, quote, waddle into the APAC case, quote, if you think it'll make a difference, according to two former senior national security officials familiar with the NSA transcript. In exchange for Harmon's help, the sources said the suspected Israeli agent pledged to help lobby Nancy Pelosi, D Democrat California, then House Minority Leader, to appoint Harmon chair of the Intelligence Committee after the 2006 elections, which the Democrats were heavily favored to win. The suspected Israeli agent was inter was was inferred. It was the opinion of Josh Marshall and Ron Campius to be Haim Saban, the giant contributor to the Democratic Party. So, a quote suspected Israeli agent is also a giant Democratic funder with influence over the Congress. We're headed for a showdown between the lobby and the grassroots inside the Democratic Party. And praise to the Obama administration, who we guess is fueling the controversy out of compelling national interest. <laughs> Why is Obama rewarding Israel for spying on the U.S.? By Ali Abunima. Electronic Intifada on Information Clearinghouse, December 31, 2015. A senior Republican is calling for President Barack Obama and officials of his administration to be, quote, investigated and prosecuted. Peter Hoekstra, a former member of Congress from Michigan who chaired the House Intelligence Committee, made the demand after revelations published by the Wall Street Journal on Tuesday. The paper reported that the National Security Agency had been eavesdropping on private conversations between Israeli officials and U.S. lawmakers who were coordinating strategy to undermine the negotiations that led to this year's six-power agreement on Iran's nuclear energy program. Hoekstra called the revelations in the Wall Street Journal, quote, scary, quote, very disturbing, quote, actually outrageous, and, and, quote, unprecedented abuse of power. WSJ reports that NSA spied on Congress and Israel communications, very disturbing, actually outrageous, maybe unprecedented abuse of power. Peter Hoekstra, December 30. 
NSA and Obama officials need to be investigated and prosecuted if any truth to WSJ reports. NSA loses all credibility. Scary. Huh. Well, huh. NSA having credibility is kind of an oxymoron, but... The NSA has been the target of global scorn since documents leaked in 2013 by whistleblower Edward Snowden and reporting led by the Intercept's Glenn Greenwald and Laura Poitras revealed the agency's massive intrusions on the private communications of virtually everyone who uses a telephone or the internet. Israeli spying revealed the secret surveillance of entire populations is Orwellian and authoritarian, to say the least. Greenwald was quick to point out the hypocrisy and the hoaxtrous outrage. Uh, as usual, mass surveillance cheerleaders become instant privacy fanatics only when they and their friends are targeted. Glenn Greenwald, December 30. But there's something else missing from hoaxtrous reaction. Any concern at all about systematic spying on the United States and others by Israel? aimed at undermining U.S. foreign policy, as revealed by the same Wall Street Journal report. The main focus of that report is on the NSA's eavesdropping on Israeli officials, which included their conversations with the members of Congress. Quote, the national security agencies targeting of Israeli leaders and officials also swept up the contents of some of their private conversations with U.S. lawmakers and American Jewish groups, the Wall Street Journal reported. Then, this raised fears in the administration that the executive branch would be accused of spying on Congress, and this is exactly what Hoekstra is now charging. According to the Wall Street Journal, the NSA reports described Ron Dermer, the Flor Florida native who renounced his U.S. citizenship to become Israel's ambassador in Washington, quote, as coaching unnamed U.S. organizations, which officials could tell from the context were Jewish American groups, on lines of argument to use with lawmakers to oppose the Iran deal. Uh, a U.S. intelligence official quoted by the newspaper said Israel's pitch to undecided lawmakers ahead of Congress approval of the deal often included such questions as, how can we get your vote, what's it going to take? As it happens, the NSA reportedly deleted the names and other identifying details about the lawmakers, organizations, and U.S. citizens involved before passing the reports on to the administration. But the concern about spying on Congress remains the focus of the article. What gets less attention is Israel spying on the U.S. Quote, stepped up NSA eavesdropping revealed to the White House how Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his advisors had leaked details of the U.S.-Iran negotiations learned through Israeli spying operations to undermine the talks, Wall Street Journal states. The Wall Street Journal report, which is based on interviews with more than two dozen unnamed current and former U.S. intelligence and administration officials, also reveals that in the early years of Obama's presidency, Israel's Unit 8200 Electronic Espionage Agency, quote, gave the NSA a hacking tool the NSA later discovered also told Israel how the Americans used it. Quote, it wasn't the only time the NSA caught Unit 8200 poking around restricted U.S. networks. The report adds, quote, Israel would say intrusions were accidental. <laughs> One former U.S. official said, and the NSA would respond, don't worry, we make mistakes too. Yeah, right. This laissez-faire attitude seems to define the Obama approach to Israel. There's nothing in the 2200-word Wall Street Journal article that suggests Obama acted to stop or punish the Israeli spying. Indeed, Israel's espionage and its aggressive efforts to undermine Obama's negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program, the cornerstone of his foreign policy, have only been rewarded. Rewarding Israel in July, the Obama administration announced it would not oppose parole for Jonathan Pollard, the U.S. Naval Intelligence officer jailed in the 1980s for trading top secrets for Israeli cash. Pollard was freed in November. While Pollard is treated by Israel as a hero, he is reviled by the U.S. military intelligence establishment as one of the most damaging spies ever. After the Pollard affair, Israel apologized and promised to stop spying on the U.S. It broke that promise many times and was apparently doing so with the knowledge of Obama when he decided not to oppose Pollard's parole. On top of that, 
and of much greater practical significance. Obama is determined before he leaves office to reward Israel with a massive increase in U.S. military aid, by some accounts, by more than 50% over the current $3 billion annual subsidy. <laughs> Hoekstra is likely to be the only first U.S. politician among many feigning outrage at counterintelligence activities by the U.S., while overlooking Israel's hostile actions against its biggest arms supplier and bank roller. I see Smith, a former top FBI counterintelligence specialist, during the Pollard affair, told Newsweek's Jeff Stein last year, quote, In the early 1980s, dealing with the Israelis was, for those assigned that area, extremely frustrating. The Israelis were supremely confident that they had the clout, especially on hill capitol hill to basically get with just about anything that clout is no doubt there that clout is no doubt still there on the hill but even more so it abounds in the ever forgiving and generous obama white house